following lecture was produced by Glorianne Publishing, a nonprofit organization, and is one of hundreds of lectures freely available via download, podcasts, streaming radio, and transcription. These lectures range in topic and complexity in order to address the many needs of humanity. We invite you to browse our library of lectures, books, courses, and articles to find teachings that suit you. Through the support of donations, Glorian Publishing has published 40 books, hosts international retreats several times a year, offers free online courses, and many other valuable resources, available to anyone worldwide. All of this has been made possible by the financial support of listeners like you. Your donations make it possible for this free public service to reach thousands of people every day. To make a tax-deductible donation in any amount, even anonymously, visit GnosticTeachings.org. Now, with heartfelt wishes for the end of suffering for all creatures, we begin the lecture. May all beings be happy. Retrospection. What is retrospection? Is the exercise the first step that we perform when we sit down to meditate? What is that that we have to retrospect in? We have to retrospect all the events that we had during the day. Since the moment that we sit down to meditate, going back in time until the moment that we woke up in our beds, even remembering the dreams that we had during the hours that we were sleeping. <coughs> Obviously, during the hours that we were in activity, in the, this day, we had many events that happened in our home, in our job, in the streets, everywhere. We reacted towards those events in different ways. We were acting through the three brains. Remember that when we are in activity, in relationship with uh, life, when we are inside of this physical body, we always do it through its three brains. The intellectual brain, which is located in the head, the emotional brain, which is located from the heart to the navel, and the motor brain, which is related with the instinct in the sexual organs. That's why we call it motor instinctual sexual brain, which is always in the lower part when we have our genitalia. Actions, emotions, and thoughts. This is what we are physically in relation with our psyche. So, the psychological aggregates that we have inside always react towards life in different ways. It depends on the event. It depends on the impression, in other words, that we receive through our senses. Therefore, during the day, we must be attentive. 
we must be in the state of alertness, always observing the head, the heart, and the sex of our body. This observation is not physically, but psychological, meaning that we have to observe these three brains from within, because we are the consciousness who is observing inside its car, inside its vehicle, inside its physical body, all the reactions that we have with our fellow men, with our relatives, with our acquaintances, with our family, friends, etc. <coughs> so when we sit down to do the retrospection, we then remember in different steps the different reactions that we had during the day, the way that we thought, the day that we felt through the heart, the way that we acted, the behavior that we had, because in every situation there is always an ego, a psychological aggregate that emerges in accordance to the circumstances. If somebody insults us, then the ego of anger jumps from within the subconsciousness in order to protest against that insult. And also, the ego of pride or self-esteem is hurt. If somebody prays us, then the ego of pride is feeling good, and then we smile. So every reaction that we have depends on the impression that we receive from the exterior world. So during the day, we had to be attentive, we had to be alert and observing always the different reactions that we have. In order to observe that, we have always remembered that we are inside of this physical body and observing the three brains. <coughs> In that way, we will have material to comprehend, to meditate. Remember that it is written, Man, know thyself, and you will know the universe and the gods. In order to know oneself, one needs to be attentive, observing always oneself. If somebody insults us, we don't have to observe the insulter. We have to observe the three brains in order to see which reaction are we going to have. And especially from which of the three brains is that particular reaction to start because always we start a reaction from any of the three brains in other words they do not act equally at the same moment they act, they act in different times if we are hurt in our emotions, for instance, if we are hurt in our self-esteem, then the heart receives the first impression, and we emotionally are altered. Then we react with words 
meaning we utilize the intellect and later we utilize the body in order to react physically with movements so you see first the emotion then the intellect and then the motor brain but also it might be that it can happen in different ways if we are touching the iron when we are ironing and we burn our head I mean our hand and then it's obvious that the motor instinctual brain is receiving the first impression so our first reaction is instinct instinctual we move instinctively and take the hand out of the ironing or the iron then we feel angry altered emotionally because we were burned and then we utter words maybe we utter some damnation etc and that is the intellectual brain at last so it might be also that we are having a conversation with somebody else in relation with certain topics intellectual knowledge beliefs that we have and if this person contradicts our beliefs or our way of thinking and says that we are stupid the way that we think and then we see that this argument starts in the intellect and after that acts in the emotion and after that the action so we have to be attentive during the day for this matter because we have to discover which brain is the one that receives the first impression then we discover that we have different defects related with the intellect other defects related with the emotion and others with the motor center or motor brain but all of them always utilize the three brains in different speeds if is an ego related with the intellect the emotional and motor brains act very slow but when is a defect related with the motor brain instinctual brain the emotional and the intellectual brain acts very fast because it's another speed in this situation we have to be aware always attentive in order to see our behavior during the day this is what we call self observation self remembering this is uh, an exercise with, that we perform in home in our job when we are in relationship with our fellow men friends relatives acquaintances etc even when we are alone because sometimes when we are alone we have thoughts we have very stupid thoughts that we have especially when we are alone in relation with many things so when we do our retrospection remembering all of these events of the day then we start labeling them we said oh this is a defect or event of anger oh this is another one but it's lust oh this is another one but it's gluttony whatever so when we finish the retrospection we have already a list of event events that happened during the day related with different things with different uh, defects 
events of anger, events of lust, events of pride, of gluttony, of hatred, etc. This is why the exercise of retrospection is a first step when we sit down to meditate. We don't have to identify with any event when we are doing this. We have just to observe. In the retrospection, we will say we are retrospecting, remembering all the events. From the very moment that we are seated there doing the meditation, until the moment that we woke up. So when we finish doing that, then we perform the second step of this uh, meditation that we call Tao meditation. The second step is called Serene observation. So, this step comes after the retrospection. Obviously, when we finish the retrospection, we have in front of our screen, of our mind, a lot of different vices that we have. We cannot comprehend all of those defects and vices that we had that day in one moment. Because if we try to comprehend all of them in one moment of meditation, we will perform something stupid. It's like uh, if we want to talk with, uh, let's say, 50 people at the same time, different topics. We will not pay attention to any of uh, any one of those 50 persons. Because one person is talking one thing, another person is talking another thing, etc. So we will be just making a mess of that uh, conversation. But if we pay attention among those 50 people only to one, and then we will get and comprehend what is the matter of that conversation that we are having and we will and we will comprehend and to utilize our consciousness better in this way we have to understand that we have just to pay attention to one event for that we have to select already we have the list of events that happened during the day so in accordance with our common sense, with our judgment, we say, well, I need to meditate, I need to comprehend this particular event that happened at this particular hour. The other ones also deserve to be comprehended, but I only can comprehend one, so I have to concentrate in this particular one. And then you release the rest. You just don't pay attention to the rest of the events, only one. And in that particular one is where you are going to apply the serene observation. That serene observation is <coughs> in detail like when you are watching a movie in the screen of your TV. You have to be very careful to observe. Observation. You see, it's serene observation means to be with serenity. And in order to be with serenity, you don't have to identify with what you are watching. You have just to observe independently, impartial, like you are not the one that did that. Because if you identify 
with that particular event that you are observing, and then you start to justify yourself. Like saying, for instance, oh, I reacted in this way, because if I don't react in this way, well, something, and etc., etc., etc. That is not the point. Who cares if you have the right to react like that or not? What you have to do is just to observe. If you are right or you are wrong, it doesn't matter. You have to observe. Don't justify yourself. Don't condemn yourself as well. It's saying, oh, what happened is that if I drank this bottle of whiskey in one shot, it's because, you know, I am weak and I like to drink and I have to be social or whatever. No. Don't accuse yourself of being bad. That is not the point. The point is to comprehend. For that you have to observe. Whether you are right or wrong, I mean, don't justify, don't, ac don't accuse yourself. Don't condemn, in other words. Don't condemn yourself, don't justify yourself. You observe. And that observation, you will discover the different actors that were in that particular movie of your life, which is that event. Those actors, of course, acted through the three brains of your body. Intellectual brain, emotional brain, motor, instinctual, sexual brain. So you have to observe. You have to see the people that came to you, the things that the people said to you, the way that you reacted, that you reacted, the way that uh, the environment was at that moment, you have to observe and to remember of course when, when you are observing that you are remembering in detail everything but when you do this if there are other people around that particular event you just don't accuse those people of being this of being that because it is not the piece of wood that your neighbor has in his eye that you are going to comprehend. It is the wood. It is the trunk that you have in your eye that you have to comprehend. So therefore, you have to all or only concern about yourself the way that you felt, the way that you thought, the way that you acted in particular related with those people or in that environment, etc. It's you, the one that you are interested in. So you just listen what the people said or remember, in other words, what the people said to you and pay attention. How did you react? How did you think, how did you feel at that moment? And then you have to discover with that serene observation how many defects were acting in that particular event. Because sometimes when you are observing yourself during meditation in a particular event sometimes you discover two defects in that event sometimes three sometimes four sometimes five etc it depends on the intensity of that event let us put an example in order to understand 
for instance, in one, if one is uh, going to work and suddenly when you arrive at your work, your boss comes and tells you, oh, I forgot yesterday to tell you that today we are not going to work because today we are going to make an inventory of what we have. So you have the day free, you can come tomorrow and work. So then, having the day free, you decide to go and visit your girlfriend or your boyfriend. And you go to her or to his house in order to have fun that day and you want to arrive by surprise in order to enjoy. But when you arrive, you observe from your car or from the street if you are walking that somebody else entered in that house few minutes before you and then curious of what is going on you just knock you, you don't knock the door you just go and peek at the window to see who is this stranger that is talking with your girlfriend or who is she, this stranger, that is talking to your boyfriend at that hour of the day and that you do not know. Then you observe that your girlfriend or your boyfriend is treating that stranger very lovely. Is hugging this person very nicely and even kissing this person in a very lovely way. You didn't notice if that kiss was in the cheek or was in, or in the mouth. You, you, you couldn't see, but you are sure that she or he kissed this person. And then immediately, of course, in that event, if you observe your three brains, you will see that you are enraged. You are jealous. And you start thinking the, the impossible. And you start thinking that maybe somebody else, that she or he is betraying you, etc. Then, you say, or you think, I'm going to fix this right now. And then you knock the door, and when your girlfriend or boyfriend opens the door, of course, she or he is surprised. And you also are surprised already and you know that somebody else is there and you enter inquiring and uh, hello how are you I'm just coming because I'm not working but uh, uh, I notice that you are busy and trying to ask from your boyfriend or girlfriend the answer immediately to see what's going on and uh, your girlfriend or your boyfriend not notice that you are a little bit upset and you and she or he is wondering why and immediately uh, uh, she or he asks you what is going on and, and you are silent well I just came but I think that you are busy uh, who is the person that is here and then uh, your boyfriend or girlfriend will say, oh, oh yeah, my, my cousin is here that came from other city, from other country today by surprise. Let me, uh, or allowed me to introduce my cousin to you. And then the person appears and in reality, 
is her or his cousin that you didn't know and that now you are knowing and then the thing changed and then you start being polite and friendly oh that was nice that you know I didn't work today and now we can be together etc and you are peaceful in your heart that that stranger is just a relative of your beloved one but that is the event that finished at that moment in the moment that you knew the truth that finished the jealousy that you were feeling the anger that you were feeling and your pride being hurt as well was there and many who knows how many defects were in that event so when, when you are doing your ritual uh, I mean your serene observation then you observe first when you are seeing the person entering into that house and that is the moment the precise moment when you have to be attentive in which part of your body are you going to feel that first impression obviously it's in your heart because you feel nice because you are feeling you are going to go and to be I mean, with your girlfriend or with your boyfriend so that of course uh, feeling that you are having in your heart is really immediately betrayed something is happening and you feel doubt about it if you go deep down into your observation you will discover that also you are afraid of losing your beloved one because who knows maybe she or he does not love you anymore so you are afraid so there is fear fear of losing what is the element of your enjoyment of your sexual enjoyment or heart enjoyment your lust so saying that you have fear but also you are jealous because you think that she is betraying you so you are jealous because you think that she belongs to you so there is jealousy there and you are controlling your anger when you enter into that house you were upset and you were you wanted to say something but you want first to know what's going on so that upset uh, to be upset is to be angry you don't need to explode like an atomic bomb in order to be angry there is a lot of subtle anger always in different reaction that we have so we have anger we have jealousy we have fear but also we find pride because you were thinking how she dares to be with this person when I am her boyfriend I am the one that deserves all of these attentions and I am the only one that deserves to be kissed whatever or treated in that way and uh, etc so you see that it's pride you feel that you are the one that is served self esteem as well because she is the one that treats you nicely and when she treats you in the way that she treats you you feel nice in your heart treating well but now she is uh, doing that to, in another way that you don't know so if you analyze uh, you discover like five defects there in that particular event so then when you do the serene observation and you finish that serene observation you discover that there are five defects that you that acted through you mm -hmm. so what you discover in the serene observation has to be related with facts not with imaginary things facts facts things that you felt that you thought that you acted 
and, that, and those are the basis for the discovery of your difference. Not imaginary things. Not that somebody told you something. No. What your consciousness tells you. What your memory in the self, uh, in the serene observation, is telling you. That is the basis. This is just an example. But maybe in your experience you might discover more or less defects related with this particular example that we are putting here. So after you finish this reading observation, you notice that if you want to comprehend all of those defects that happened or that acted in that particular event, if you want to comprehend it all together at the same moment, you won't comprehend any one of them. You need to apply the concentration in each one of them, one by one, in a very successive order. Not comprehending, for instance, uh, fear and then jumping into anger and then jumping into jealousy, because then you are not comprehending anything. You have to focus only one, and then you select one of those defects on that particular event to concentrate and to comprehend. And you have to comprehend this one in relation always with your three brains. In your emotional brain, in intellectual brain, <coughs> and in your motor instinctual sexual brain. Feelings thoughts and actions in relation with the event. In that comprehension you have to discover in accordance with the law of the analogy of the contraries. Because always in front of white is black. In front of day is night. In front of a black horse, there is a white horse. In front of a small, there is a large. So it's always the opposite. So it is obvious that in front of any defect is always a virtue. A virtue is the way in which the consciousness always acts right. And a defect is an action in which the consciousness always acts wrong. So therefore, you have to discover that virtue. That virtue may, is always related with the way that you should react in that event. How you should react without jealousy course, the opposite of jealousy is to trust the person. So you have to feel the opposite of that. How do you have to feel? How do you have to think? In other events, likewise, that one, in order not to be jealous. But just with that particular event, as well, you have to find the contrary uh, of any defect that you are analyzing. In other words, you have to comprehend, to analyze completely, entirely, the defect that you are focusing, that you are concentrated in. So when you finish with that ego, let's say the ego of anger, or in this case we said the jealousy, right? That we were concentrated in jealousy. And then you push it aside because you already comprehended it. And then you analyze the anger in the same way. The anger that was related with that event. Not the anger of 
yesterday or whatever. No. The anger related with that particular event when you were upset because your girlfriend was talking with another stranger. This is it. That is the only anger that you want to comprehend that moment. After you find the opposite, the virtue, or the way that you have to react, the way that you have to behave in relation with that particular event in the right way, and then you put it aside as well, and then you take fear. You do the same thing with fear. You comprehend fear. When you finish with fear, and then you take pride, and then you comprehend pride, and when you comprehend pride, and then you comprehend self-esteem. And then, when you finish with self-esteem, you have already comprehended the whole event. But, you see, you have to do it in order. It has to be a sequence, a didactic, in order to comprehend the whole thing. So, at the end, when you comprehend it, when you comprehend the whole thing, you analyze and you comprehend it, the whole event. And this is precisely the moment in when you finish your superlative self-analysis. That is what is called the superlative self-analysis. The comprehension of each and every one of the defects related only with that particular event that you are meditating in. So when you finish with that uh, superlative self-psychoanalysis, then you start doing what we call <coughs> the accusation and disintegration of each and every one of the defects related with that event. Then you have to invoke your interior kaon inside of us there exists that element that we call the superlative consciousness of our being that superlative divine consciousness of our being is that consciousness that we felt sometimes when we do something wrong and then we feel remorse we feel here in the heart something that tells us that we did something wrong and we feel bad because we did it that remorse is the interior police that we call Kaon and is our interior judge. Is that part of the consciousness that is our interior judge that accuses, points the bad thing that we did. So then we have to invoke it. So then when we say Kaon, 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 mentally of course, invoking it. And then that particular element of our consciousness will be active in order to accuse, to sentence that particular or those particular defects that we comprehended because we need to annihilate them. And then the, after invoking our interior kaon, we do also invoke our divine particular divine mother. Actually, the invocation of our Divine Mother should be done beforehand. We should do it from the very moment that we are seated there. Because we need the assistance of our Divine Goddess in order to comprehend 
because the consciousness, or I mean the mind, is always wandering. Do not be discouraged because your mind wanders always when you are meditating. This is precisely the defense of the ego. The ego always is struggling inside in order for you not to comprehend and put in your mind a lot of idiocies, a lot of things that you don't need to have in the, your mind that moment in order to discourage you. But you just don't identify with all intrusive thoughts that are coming in your meditation and just pray to your Divine Mother in this way. My Mother, my Goddess, please help me to concentrate in this event or in this particular different. I want to comprehend them. Help me. Any moment that you feel that your mind is playing with you, just pray to your Divine Mother. And then you keep in your meditation and your analysis. And of course, in the step of accusation, you have to invoke her with more strength. My mother, my goddess, please come, come into me. Assist me. You are the only one that can help me in this very moment to disintegrate because you are the Holy Spirit. You have the power to annihilate, to disintegrate this particular defect that acted in me or through me in this day. And then you have to imagine your Divine Mother, like a beautiful Divine Virgin, holding a spear of fire, and she comes to you. Then you have to imagine your Divine Mother in front of you. For that, of course, you have to have your eyes closed. Imagine your Divine Mother in front of you the Divine Goddess Kundalini holding the Spear of Fire. And then, in front of you, she is waiting for your words. And then you have to talk with her. Because to pray with God is to talk with God. And then you have to talk with her with words that are coming really from your heart. And then you have to say, My mother, my goddess, you that are my real being, who are love within myself, I beg you, please, to hear me. I accuse myself because it's you the one that is bottled up in that defect, you know? So you have to feel that it's you the one that did it. You have to say, I accuse myself of doing this and that. I did this, my mother, in this particular event. I reacted like this or like that. In this case, it said uh, jealousy. I was jealous, my mother. I shouldn't be jealous, but I was jealous because I see this and that, and I comprehended that I shouldn't be like this. The way that I have to, that I have to react, that I have to behave in relation with this particular event is like this, because you already comprehended. So you are talking with her about your comprehension. This is a defect, my mother. I react like this. It is wrong. I should react like that. And then. He said, I beg you, please, my mother, annihilate this defect of me, disintegrate it, because I need to be free of this. I need to behave, I need to react better. After that accusation, you said, please, mother, kill me, destroy me in this particular defect. If you pray that prayer that says, <coughs> Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Yeshua. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us who have the sinning eye, now and at the hour of the death. 
of our defects. Amen. This is the prayer of Hail Mary. Of course, Hail Mary, or Mary, is in sacrifice. It's our Divine Mother, Ram Io. So when we bop Ram Io, our Divine Mary, and then we pray like that, and we imagine her with a spear of fire in her hand, and we have to imagine her how she pierces our head, our heart, and our sex. Because the defect always acts through the three brains. At the moment that we are imagining our Divine Mother piercing with the spear of fire our three brains, we imagine the ego. We have to bring into our memory <coughs> that particular event where we were acting like that. And we will see that the ego is burning in flames. And we see that we are the one that is, that is burning with flames in the brain, in the heart, in the sex, at the same time that our mother is killing us. We can see even the difference with horns or with like a devil burning there and trying and protesting but being killed by the fire of the Holy Spirit. This is how the defect dies within us. And at the same moment, that we are doing this supplication, this annihilation, we have to perform sexual transmutation. In other words, we have to imagine by doing pranayama, which is deep breathing, deep respiration, transmuting the sexual force, imagining that we breathe profoundly the sexual energy is going up through our spinal column like a flame and burning in the sex, in the heart, in the brain, in the three brains. The defect that we are asking for the annihilation. If uh, during this practice we pronounce the mantra cream, is better because the mantra ka. I mean, K-R-I-M, cream, is a powerful mantra that takes the very essence of our sexual force into our psyche. We have to pronounce, of course, the mantra, cream, mentally. So, while we transmute the sexual energy and we pronounce the mantra, cream, mentally, that fire is going and burning in the three brains, that particular defect. And at the same time, we imagine the Divine Mother killing the ego inside of us. So we repeat the same thing with the anger, with the fear, with pride, with self-esteem of that particular example that we were putting here. Of course, it depends how many defects you discover in your meditation in order to apply the accusation and the disintegration to each one of them in the same way, in the same order that we meditated, in the same order that we comprehended them, in the same way we have to annihilate them, one by one. So after we finish, we give thanks to our Divine Mother, <coughs> of that particular uh, for that particular meditation that we perform and if we want we can even choose another event of that day and then we apply again self-observation and uh, self-psychoanalysis or superlative analysis and accusation the same way for every event that's why during the day if you have time you can meditate in two, three, or four events. Usually people only meditate in one because they are very busy during the day and only have time to, when they arrive home, to apply only, I mean, these steps only to one event of uh, after the retrospection. But you can do it uh, many times during the day and this is the way how, uh, how you change but during the day, as I repeat, you have to observe. 
another thing is that when you uh, practice sexual magic, if you are going to uh, perform your sexual magic, it's better. So during the sexual act, in the moment when you are transmuting your sexual energy with your partner, with your spouse, and then you pray to your Divine Mother in the same way. But in this, in this time, in this way, you have to say it aloud. So your partner, your spouse, will hear what are you saying in the accusation. I'm not saying that you have to meditate united, sexually united, no. That you have to disintegrate. In the moment when you are united in the sexual act, you have to say it. So your partner will hear what you say. My mother, my goddess, please annihilate this defect of anger that I have inside. I beg you please to disintegrate it. Just like that. Simple. And then your spouse will repeat. Yes, mother of mine, disintegrate this ego of, of anger of mine. And then both must imagine the Divine Mother killing that particular ego that any one of the spouses utter in that moment. In other words, the husband has to imagine that the defects of his wife are his defects. And the wife has imagined that the defects of her husband are her defects in a moment when you are accusing them. Because really, in the moment of the sexual act, one is one being. So the defect that is accused in that moment, and we are asking for the disintegration, is annihilated completely because receives uh, an energy of three times stronger because he is the positive, the negative, and the neutral who is united. The woman is the negative, the man is the positive, and the neutral force which unite both of them in a sexual act. In other words, the Holy Trinity acts directly disintegrated, disintegrating that particular defect. So there is no defect that can tolerate this type of energy of the sexual act if we ask like that. If we are single, well, then we can ask only by doing our pranayama as we explained before. But we can apply even both things if we are married. If we meditate, we do it as being single, and when we are in the sexual act, we ask again to be sure that that ego is going to be annihilated. That way, we advance little by little and our consciousness will be liberated little by little this is how we finish, we will say we apply the factor that is we have to die within ourselves so the annihilation of the ego is after the comprehension of it and the comprehension of it is after the observation of it during the day. Because we have to observe. We have to be awakened during the day, consciously. I mean, to be awake is to be remembering ourselves and to observe ourselves. Remember that uh, we have 3% of consciousness which is free not bottle up within the ego. The rest, the 97% is bottle up within the ego. So therefore, that's, this is why we have to do super efforts during the day in order to remember ourselves, in order to not to identify with the different situations of life, different circumstances. We have to be, uh, we have to feel all of it that we are inside the body when we are talking, when we are walking, when we are doing anything, we have to do what we are doing and observe always the three brains. And uh, that way we discover ourselves. When we discover ourselves, then in meditation we comprehend ourselves. And after the comprehension, 
we ask for annihilation. This is how we advance on the path of a self-realization. This is how the consciousness becomes free from bondage because our soul, our consciousness is bondage to the ego to the defects, vices and errors that we have this is why we suffer but this is the way to liberate ourselves from bondage and uh, we awake and we we'll start behaving better and better. So, Tao meditation is the Tao path of a self realization in which we know ourselves, in which we put in equilibrium the three brains. This is the path of the equilibrated human being who is not a slave of his defect of vices but that control them, annihilate them and walks always balance. So this is the explanation and in the other side of this cassette we have the practice so the mantra Wu W U Wu in combination with the waves of the ocean give us help in order to penetrate into the subconsciousness that's why we combine meditation comprehension of the ego in combination with the mantra Wu if we practice this every day we will see then the change that we will have but we have to do it daily because in order to see results we have to practice daily not every week or every month every day in that way we will find a wonderful universe inside of us To learn more about what you learned in this lecture, we invite you to explore the books published by Gloria and Publishing, available from booksellers worldwide. You may also be interested in online courses or upcoming retreats, all of which you can learn about at GnosticTeachings.org. All of this has been made possible by the financial support of listeners like you. Will you help others to benefit from this knowledge? Most spiritual schools recommend a donation of $10 to $20 per lecture. Every donation helps. Make a donation now at GnosticTeachings.org. Thank you. May all beings be happy. Amen.